Welcome everyone to the podcast. It's me, Zero, here with... Diddididicade. Right. Vashi V. The Shimmering Moonlight. Gokai Platinum. Today we're going to start off talking about our newest Sentai show, Uchu Sentai Q Ranger. Episode 1. So the opening scene is some kids playing in a park. Then the camera pans out and Earth is being invaded by some sort of aliens. And then it pans out to the entire Milky Way galaxy, where we get the narrator explaining that the 88 constellation systems have been conquered by the space shogunate Jark Matter. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's quite a name. Uh, I mean, there's not a lot of... Um, you can either call it Jark Matter or you can call it Jerk Matter, and neither one sounds much better than the other. I was about to make the jerk joke. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of had the chance to get over the jerk matter thing when I was looking it up online, but when it kind of went uh, straight from, you know, the planet being uh, taken over, and then they're talking about 88 constellations, and I'm just like, whoa, okay, that escalated quickly. It sure did, but I guess it's one of those weird things. It's like they're trying to do setup, and it's like, or I know you're trying to go for, like, a dramatic shot, or, like, you think things are bad now, like, you have no idea how bad it could get, right? But, like, they totally failed. I just think it was, um, I don't know, I'll probably say this a lot, but you can kind of tell from the beginning that the whole thing is going to be, like, really sugar-fueled. Like, honestly, from the very start, especially when they zoomed out in on the galaxy and stuff, it felt like <laughs> I snorted a bowl full of fruity pebbles or something. I, it was so Saturday morning cartoon hype. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was kind of just out there in your face. But uh, our story is not even going to be taking place on Earth because we pan into a kind of saucer-like planet, Krotos. Then the narrator continues that not all hope is lost and a bull, marlin, and chameleon ship fly in and kind of destroy some of the alien ships. And then they detach, the, well, these orbs attach, detach from them. A green, a yellow, green, and black one, numbered nine, seven, five, respectively, which kind of, I guess, dissolve really into or shrink, revealing two humans and a robot minotaur, and they are Hammy, Spada, and Champ. And it kind of took me a while to realize, but Champ is actually wearing the uniform jacket, like on his shoulder. I thought that was just some oh, Kate really? thing. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I didn't notice. Yeah, it's too big for him to fit, so he's wearing it on his right shoulder. Like you know how Beast had the whole uh, mantles thing. Yeah, that that's actually kind of cool now that you point it out. Though I mean, I I like Champ. It's just I have to also accept that he's a robot who like does stretches, and he doesn't really act much like a robot. He just kind of sounds like one. Um, like, he talks about, like, justice running through his veins, and I'm like, what veins? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it could be, like, the Transformers thing of, like, they once were, Yeah, you know, yeah I'd have to organic. learn more about him to really know. I, I, at first, it's kind of a lot to accept, but he's just, he seems like he's pure justice, and I, I have to love that. I mean, that is interesting. The other thing I found interesting about that guy was, like, the bad guys attack and like it's a robot with basically the exact same color scheme and like all the villain grunts sort of have like different colors because like you know they're probably like planets who are part of this evil empire now so they're all different types but i'm like so black ranger you're one of these robots from this planet i wonder if that storyline is gonna ever get picked up they could do a focus episode on like everybody's home planets since there's so many aliens That'd be cool. Uh, any other thoughts on this, you guys? As long as they don't, you know, run the same pace as the first episode did. <laughs> um, <laughs> that, that so this, was terrible. this intro is very Gokaiger with the whole legendary war and, like, the battle is already happening when you look at the screen. Yeah, I kind of like that better, to be honest. Yeah. Gokaiger. Very what that was more of a prologue kind of thing. This is the story. Yeah, well, it reminds me of like one of my favorite animes, Gurren Lagann, where the first thing you see is an explosion that sets the whole tone. Okay, so the thing is, like, I I really don't like giant robot 
anime. Okay, here's the thing. I do like mecha shows. I don't like freaking super robot shows. Yeah, that's understandable. They're, it's a different taste. Yeah, I kind of understand what you mean. Like, you know, it just sets the intensity and the pace. I'm definitely a super robot kind of person myself, so that, hype, that kind of stuff hypes me up. So we can see that the three heroes have kind of drag visor-like weapons on their arms. Yeah, then I love they go, wrist Ichi... mounted things. Oh yeah, seriously. Then they go Ichi Nissan, one, two, three, go, Mawasuride, and then they put their Q Tamas into the weapon, which we don't have the name of yet. Uh and then they revealed the Oshi Q Tama, Kamerion Q Tama, Kajiki Q Tama. And then they size a change into their Ranger forms and they do kind of a semi roll call. With the three members, Ring Star, Oshi Black, Shinobi Star, Kamerion Green, Food Meister, which is a pun, Kajiki Yellow. And I gotta say, the sound effects and the music they had playing in the background really reminded me of Final Fantasy XIII. It was kind of like ripped straight off that game. Really? It felt, I don't know, I can't say I can pinpoint exactly why it sounds for me to me but it's like um i don't know maybe like an old macross like nes shooting game almost hmm. if it was going for macross that'd be interesting because i always think of macross more like rock ish well i mean more like um the more like the sound effect for when uh the wrist mounted device is in use oh, and okay, most of my yeah. macross experiences from just video games admittedly i had the nes kid as or the nes game as a kid believe it or not i am glad to see that melee finally became geki green <laughs> yes <laughs> I, I love seeing a, a female Green Ranger every now and then, and now we actually get to have one front line and center. Every now and then. This is our first actual female Green. Yeah. You know, no no, um, Mido Ninja this time. No recolor, no repaint. Okay, no re okay. Female Ranger. Yeah. Trans uh, transfer changes from Tokyo Ranger don't count because they're just borrowing the color. Yeah. And, <laughs> and Tack on Returns movie members do not count. Yeah. Definitely. I totally hear you there. The good thing is, like, we open the thing, and, like, the first ranger, or I guess human you see, is just the green. So it's like, all right, we're going to put this person right up in front. She's probably going to be, like, the second most important character. Yeah, I'm feeling it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have any strong opinions about uh, any of the rangers besides uh, Champ, at least out of these first three. But when I see a wrist-mounted device, I think... Oh great, a toy I can wear without buying like uh, belt strap extenders. It's nice that they went back to the wrist thing, but I guess it also makes sense because like what else could they use, right? Because the rangers are so many different types. Like they all have like okay, besides the humans, they all have prosthetic hands or some kind of cosmetic thing if they're not human. So it's probably like harder to go put like a take this and stick it in the slot thing or you know the belt because then you got to make like a different size belts for everyone because like if it's just a human size one it's gonna look weird if you put it on champ yeah yeah you know like so i mean it's kind of like a marketing thing where they just like all right the wrist is the safest one but yeah it's nice to have it back i guess plus like it's the gun thing i'm like this looks really close to Shit, I can't remember any Sentai names, alright? I'm a writer fan, give me a break. Don't um, worry about it. The, the dino one with the batteries. Oh, okay. that's Kyo um, Ranger. Kyo Ranger. I almost said Kyo Ranger, yeah. and I'm like, wait, we're talking about Kyo Ranger. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't know, I kind of expect them to take the, the, the wrist morpher off at some point and then use it like a gun. It looks like it has a handle. Later on, they call it a blaster. Oh, uh, okay. Well, Either way, well, interchangeable weapons, reconfigurable, really nice. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so then, while they're fighting, they get a call from Raptor283, who I'm guessing is a robot? I'm really not sure. Um, but yeah, she just basically reminds them that their mission is to save the civilians, and that they can't really be too reckless until all nine are gathered, because uh, so, they're really the only... Ranger so Which far. Is, yeah, I mean, but... that sounds smart. 
like, to be honest. I don't know. She's a really cute character. She seems smart, but... Yeah. Not sure what else I think about her. I mean, she's voiced by Luca. I guess that's unfair. Oh, yeah, that's that's fun. Basically, she's just saying, don't get too involved right now until we have everyone so that we don't lose anyone. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably smart. <laughs> Ranger mom. I mean, like, you're fighting an evil galactic empire. You know, better have some or most of your important pieces together. I mean... They're not going to take them on by themselves. Who are they, the Gokaijers? <laughs> I mean, the other problem is, like, they couldn't even combine until Red showed up. They, they didn't even know that combining was a thing until uh, later on. Yeah. Um, Vashi, you got something on this? Uh, at this point, the only thing I really enjoy are the, the, the suits. Because they, they actually do look unique. Yeah. That, with, like, the, the, the fact that each face mask is different. And, and everything else. The only thing that drives me nuts is Yellow's visor, because it looks like he's just going to stab somebody with it. <laughs> yeah, that is a little... It's because there's so much negative space, you know, and, and all the other ones, and then he's way different. I mean, that's going to be one hell of an interesting headbutt, I guess. Yeah. I want to see him headbutt someone. Uh, it's going to be interesting in a crossover. I'm like, next year, just get normal suits or something. <laughs> I just remember that... Uh, what is it? Um... O Ranger and Power Ranger or something? Wait, for what? For Sentai. It's like O Ranger, and then they had a crossover movie with some other Sentai. Oh yeah, how they were doing that for a while. No, they did that pretty much for every series starting at. I no, want no, to say O Ranger. I know, but then. but like the next suit, the next team and O Ranger suit look pretty close, and then they go and it's like, what's up with that get up? It looks ridiculous. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? It's basically the same thing. <laughs> but like this. This time, I'm like, yeah, if the other team shows up and they're like, what the hell is with that get up? Like, not, not, um, uh, not Zuoger, because, you know, they're like half animal, half human things. But, like, the next team, they're, you know, they're probably gonna go, like, if this doesn't work, Tau is gonna, to you know, turn it back to being all boring humans again, right? I think this series has more furries in it than Zuoger actively had on screen at any given moment, not counting background characters. We actually have more characters who you get to see an alien or animal face 100% of the time this time. So it's a better furry Sentai than furry Sentai, possibly. Yeah, I mean, I that's one of the interesting parts. Like, I might give this show a chance. I don't know, I'm not super feeling it right now, but like... The fact that you only have, like, three normal-looking... Okay, even Yellow is a weirdo with that helmet, so... Two humans, and, like, everybody else is different, so I'm like, I wonder where this would go. Plus, we're getting more people, so I wonder how that's going to turn out. Yeah, it yeah. seems so different. Like, I'm just excited to see what's going to be different, honestly. I know, it's nice to see, like, Sentai take a chance, because, like, Ryder every year is batshit insanity at this point. Well, um, writer wants to make sure you'd never know what a writer is for the rest of your life after each new series. Yeah, pretty much. Right? Like, x showed up and it's like, this is insane. But, like, think about it for a second. If you took the eyes off x and gave them compound eyes, would anybody have complained as much? No, right? Yeah, right. It's still the same silhouette, uh, if you know what I mean. Yeah. I mean, it's still crazy, but it's like, eh, at this point, you just shrug it off, right? I mean, X8 is more of a um, writer than some of our most recent writers because he actually is a modified human. I mean, technically all X8, write X8 writers are. Yeah. Plus, like, it, I don't know. I kind of like, okay, we're getting way off topic, but I guess we can just say this quick. I kind of like X8 because it's got that slimmer, like, profile. It's like, last couple of years, we had writers that basically needed CGI to make them move. Okay, they could move, but, you know, hmm. like... At least we have, um, basically, x cyclist motif is pretty much really throwing back to the old school writers where they're basically like, okay, we have armored chess and stuff, and it's basically a jumpsuit after that. Yeah. So that's kind of nice. So then we cut to a traveler on a space bike listening to the radio, and it's horoscope, so I guess... You know, we're still doing horoscopes after all the constellations have been conquered. You know, it's just a thing. <laughs> How does that even work in space? They're not even the same thing. Yeah. Horoscopes only work because they're on Earth, but yeah. Maybe he's listening to, like, an Earth radio station. <laughs> yeah, sure. On his, on his space fucking uh, um, go-kart 
this show is kind of what seems like a fuck logic kind of show to be honest so i'll accept it oh yeah so apparently the best horoscope for the day or the week whatever is leo the pilot gets excited and then as the radio starts cutting out it says watch out for meteor storms and then <laughs> while meteor storms are fall while meteors are falling around him his bike starts malfunctioning and he crashes towards Krodos. Then we cut back to the Q Rangers evacuating people. The bike crashes on some of the grunts. Uh, and then the traveler just gets off the bike totally unharmed and says that his landing was a success. <laughs> Even though he clearly crashed, which Spada points out. But the Rangers take the chance to start clearing a path for the civilians. The traveler admires them, says he'll join them, and then says his cat phrase lucky pretty much and the worst <laughs> punches two of the grunts in the face yep and then we get the opening lucky star well one thing is that uh my cousin's last names are actually lucky so this is gonna get old really quick <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah, and he he says the catchphrase too, like five times throughout the episode, maybe six. I don't even know. But uh, aside from that, he does kind of have some interesting point in the, throughout the episode. I mean, at first he seems kind of just like a typical obnoxious hothead, but he does kind of. We do see more sides of him later on, I guess. So I think he's all right for now. Okay, Rai, your thoughts? Lucky just bicycling through space. I just didn't even think twice about that. I just kind of accepted it for what it was. Okay, Vashi. Uh, aside from his constant use of his catchphrase, he, he's all right for the moment. <clears throat> it, it's his catchphrase is just used way too much for me, it, especially in points where it really doesn't hold into account. Yeah, that makes sense. Because you know, first episode they're doubling down and everything crazy. Hopefully it gets dialed back. Hopefully, because, you know... But Toei's track record with cutting down catchphrases is not really that good. Well, hopefully it's not five or damn episode. Um, Gokai, your thoughts? Well, uh, my very first impression I saw once I saw um, Lucky fighting. So that was when I first started to really get an impression of who this character was. And pretty much what I'm seeing between the catchphrases and his recklessness is he's kind of like the illegitimate love child of Deku Ranger's Bon Bon Akaza and Kyo Ruger's uh, Daigo Kiryu. It's just all the catchphrases of Daigo and the like, uh, how, how things, at least right now, kind of center on the fact that his recklessness makes things happen, combined with the fact that he's just uh, such a hothead and, and really quick to, to, to join the fight, uh, yeah, it just really reminds me of those two characters, with Decker Ranger seeming like it's continually trying to make a, com a comeback. It, it seems like they just tried to um, ex do something like Bon Bon, but with absolutely none of the subtlety, and there wasn't really much subtlety in Bon Bon's character to begin with. Uh, he's entertaining for that, but I don't really relate very strongly with the luck motif. Um... I don't really like characters that rely entirely on luck. His antics will be entertaining, but I don't think I'm going to relate to him. But he, that is good enough. And that's all I've got. Nice. I mean, like, this guy, man. This guy. Pretty much, like, derailed. Like, I'm like, ah, oh, I feel like it's a new show, a new start. I feel like, you know, working on the subs for this. And I saw this, and I'm like, do I just quit TVN now? <laughs> I mean, like, I haven't worked for them for, like, four months because I've been so damn busy, <laughs> but, like... You you had a chance to run away when you, uh, saw, uh, Takaharu and the Ninja. Oh, I didn't watch that. Oh, okay. That train wreck. <laughs> I thought Tokyuger was the train wreck they did there. Tokyuger is amazing, how dare you. No, no, uh, I, I'm not just seeing the show, I'm just saying because of trains. Uh, <laughs> I, get, I was going to say something like, uh, Tokyo just train never crashed, but... Hey, you cross the yellow, white line, you see what happens. Okay, okay. Yeah, cross well, the I, black I line if you're really ballsy. Mm, yeah, I don't think so. No, I meant like, remember that Gaim crossover? Anybody? I didn't, I remember, uh, I didn't remember it, but I don't get what you're referencing. Okay, so... You know, they always say, like, ah, oh, don't cross the white line yeah. or whatever, right? And, like, in Gaim, somebody actually crosses it, and, like, Conductor drives the entire crane. 
right over them. Oh, that, that I don't remember this. Just Gaim, though. Yeah, it's in the grind. I don't remember this. I'm gonna have to go back and watch that again. It also happened to the Kuros and a few of the villains that they fought throughout the show. So, and I, I love a transformation sequence that can be used as an attack every time, no matter what show it is. I like that gimmick. Yeah, it's pretty nice. I mean, like cutting back to this show, though, man. Lucky. It's one of those annoying things, like, nobody likes Deus Ex Machina, like, you might like the spectacle in the moment, but, like, if this is your standard operating procedure, it's really bad. Because, like, we have nine rangers, and this is the gimmick he thought of. Like, I can think of, like, oh, you're running out of shit, but, like, this is your leader, Mr. I'm Super Lucky, what happens when the luck runs out, you know? Maybe the show will address that. Yeah, maybe it will, but I don't know, man. Like, after uh, Jewel with Yamato being such like, an awesome red, like, to cut to this guy, I was like... Yeah, it is kind of jarring. But there's 11, like, there's, like, 11 other rangers to focus on, or 10, so... <laughs> I know, but, like, <laughs> you know, it's kind of that writer thing of, like, you gotta kind of at least sort of like the main main guy. Yeah, I get ya. To watch more, you know? But, like, Sentai could just focus on something else, like, eh... But, like, right now, nobody's developed enough for me to give a shit. Uh, anyway, let's move on, otherwise we're gonna be here forever. So, after the opening, which I thought was pretty good, uh, we cut to the, the ship of the Rebellion, the Oriongo, and I thought it was refreshing that the heroes get a cool design, a cool design base, not just the villains, because usually the villains get the badass lair, but now the heroes have a pretty cool ship. Uh, so the Traveler is eating some pretty strange-looking food made by Spada, who claims to be the best cook in the galaxy. And then he says, oh, you're pretty lucky, aren't you, that you get to eat my delicious, weird-looking food. And then the Traveler says, oh, how did you know my name? It's Lucky. And Champ laughs at his name while he's lifting weights. And then Lucky makes fun of him, because, I mean, he's a robot lifting weights. It's equally <laughs> as ridiculous. That made sense. Because I'm like, yeah, anybody would question, why is a robot lifting weights? You know, the food thing is a lot weirder because, like, you're traveling around the galaxy. Like, of course it's going to look weird. Like, have you seen half the shit the planet Earth eats? <laughs> you know, like, traveling around the galaxy with, I don't know, space Sanji. Oh, know, yeah. Should be interesting. You ever have stuffed pheasant? No. But, like, if you want to look up some random shit, look up Perry Oysters. No, don't look it up, okay? <laughs> and I'm not going to tell you what it is because it's stupid. Uh, anyway, thoughts on these two guys? I mean, like, there's... I don't know, man. Right now, it's just like, okay, I'm the Black Ranger. I'm super strong, so I'm lifting weights. I'm the Yellow Ranger. I can cook. I'm like, that's cool, but, like, you got anything else, man? Yeah, come to think of it, it's pretty common to associate the Yellow Ranger with food in some way, isn't it? That's the stereotype, but, like, uh... Akiba Ranger kind of commented on this when, like, Yellow was, like, constantly eating, like, bowls of curry and, like, you know, that's the stereotype, but realistically only two Yellow Rangers really like, you know, spicy curry or whatever. But that's, like, from the Showa era, so it's, like, a callback. Like, one, it was one yeah, of the it's... first Yellow Rangers, if not the first one. I mean, I do know that the first one was, um, a, you know, really plump guy. Yeah. Uh, I guess it makes sense, but it's interesting that he's cooking. I mean, I wonder if that'll come. Hopefully it does, because because Kabuto exists. So, like, you know, we already had a cooking show with, like, nine-ish toku suits, so why not? Agito. Yeah, Agito also, right? But, like, Kabur Kabuto made it, like, its central theme. But, yeah, Agito also. Yeah, this show has a lot of really exotic space things in it, and I, I just like the flavor of it. Not not to make a food pun or anything. Uh, so, so basically, um, after that little gag, um, Raptor and Hammy show up. Raptor fixed his bike, which totally crashed. Um, and then Hammy asks if Lucky's from Ruse, which is, I'm assuming, a faraway planet from how she exaggerates it. Uh, and then Lucky states that he wants to travel to the ends of the galaxy. Hammy laughs at him, and he kind of thinks that she's laughing with him, I guess. But she's not. <laughs> <laughs> and Spada makes the point that he's surprised Lucky hasn't been attacked yet. And then Champ goes on to explain how Dark Matter pretty much has a scorched earth policy. They'll kill civilians. They really don't care. They'll destroy whole planets if they have to. 
and Raptor explains that they're really the only ones actually in rebellion against dark matter. What about all the damn Sentai or other Tokusatsu heroes from space? Like, aren't they getting a goddamn uh, Deco Ranger versus Gavan movie? Yeah. Well, okay. Ga- like these Gavan is clearly them. too busy with Deco Ranger to do anything <laughs> Dude, about jerk matter. De- there's two generations of them, an entire police force, no, two entire space police forces, a pirate army, you know, what the hell, a couple space goddamn, okay, okay, the space riders are probably protecting Earth. I mean, they're pro. I just, I look at it as, like, the, the, the Q Rangers are a rebellion, but that's not to say that other people aren't helping, it's just that the galaxy's a big place. Yeah, fair enough, I guess. It might just be in a weird part of the galaxy where, you know, the space sheriffs and... The space ghetto. <laughs> they live yeah. in the space ghetto. Yeah, see, that's funny. And then uh, two points. Like, there was something that Lucky said. And then the other one was like, oh, I want to go to the edge of the galaxy. I'm like, oh, great, Firefly. You're just going to go mad, man. Don't do it. <laughs> and then there was something else, but I don't remember now. So any other thoughts on this? It's such. It's trying to basically do Sentai Star Wars. I'm not sure if it's succeeding. I feel more like it's just trying to do every over-the-top Sentai thing at the same time. Okay, so Sentai Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, yeah, actually, kind of like that. I don't know, it kind of, it's kind of ripped my face off so far. It doesn't give you a lot of room to breathe. Yeah, I mean, it's got, it feels like too many episodes crammed into one, and it's weird because, like, it's the first episode, Sentai, like, what is the rush? So the only thing is they're probably getting them out as fast as possible for the crossover. Mm, yeah. But, like, even still. Maybe it'll slow down then, because un- unlike Ghost, we only have so many characters to focus on. Technically, if you consider every icon in Ghost a character, that's, like, 30 characters you have to focus on for the first half of the show. Yeah, that's a little too much. I mean, with this many rangers, hopefully they they don't need any filler. I mean, they're going to put it in because they're going to run out of budget. But at this point, yeah, we were joking before, they're going to run out of budget by episode 3. That's why they're shoving everything. You want to say something, Vashi or Rai? I'm I'm hoping that with it being the nine rangers, while, yes, they're, they're switching up the formula and all that, I'm hoping that once all nine get introduced, every episode doesn't involve all nine. I'm hoping Same. that they'll they'll do like some kind of like, oh well, these three are gonna go off and do this, these ones are gonna go off and do this, and do essentially two different stories along the same time frame. So like ha- like one half of the episode would be you know red, green, and blue going off and looking for this item because they need it or whatnot, this little power up, while the other the rest of them are going to help this planet and then have it all come together to where, you know, in like the second, the, the next episode, okay, they've got it. Now they're coming to help and it's the big boss fight. Because otherwise the, the pacing for the show is going to be way too fast for everything of them trying to cram everything into one or two episodes. If they have to focus on all of them at the same time. Yeah. That's going to be intense. Like it's one of those things like Ryder tends to do a, a lot of two-parters, Sentai not so much. With this many rangers, you sort of need that. Right. Yeah, well, you can't even use... it Right now, you can't even use all nine rangers to form the mecha. You have to leave some out. So I think that it, um, the episodes might not even end with all the riders combining. Or not all riders, all the rangers combining every time. Yeah, that'd be interesting. I mean, like, I... See... This is such a space show. Okay, if this doesn't run out of bu- budget, I wonder if they're gonna do sort of like a um, like a mecha show thing, like a Gundam or something, where it's like the ship clearly looks like it's built to launch like multiple things. So like, I wonder if the enemy is just gonna come in, like a couple of them take this out, and then they go to the next point, and then like the rest of the team deploys on a planet or something. That'd be cool. Like, you know, some of them are in orbit, some of them are... Like, sort of the Go-Busters thing, where, like, you know, one person fights the mech, the other guys are on the ground. Like, I wonder if they'll do that. Oh, please, I so hope so. <laughs> like, because the, the other thing we're, we're going to run into is if they're they're not splitting up the team and they only do, you know, one story per episode, you know, or one episode per story, is you're going to lose a lot of character development on it because you're going to have to 
either cram cram a lot of it in, so it'll end up being for seeming like forced and whatnot, or a lot of it'll just get forgot about. Eventually, like they mellow out and they start just giving a couple characters like these Jewels. Well, it's got but much fewer characters. Kind of, you know, had like a lot of character focused stuff. Eventually, I hope it's sort of like that, but. The other thing is that's content on them being in space. Yeah. You know, if the budget runs out and they just land on Earth, like, in three episodes, all these tears just go out the window. Right. Because, like, who the hell knows what happens at that point. Some, a lot of the, the, that stuff could be done in stock footage, so you get stock footage of the Voyagers leaving, and then you just cut to a different location, color correct the location a little bit so it looks more like a foreign planet. And it's like, it, oh, is that that one bri- Is that the one under the bridge place from whatever Common Rider? It's like, no, see, the sky's orange. <laughs> so basically use the whole Power Rangers in space method. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. That's the smart move, but that's like saying, oh, it's smart to just reuse effects and shots, Toei, but they don't. Like, Coast is proof of that. Or not Coast, uh, x Like, It depends, though. They're keeping some effects, but some of the other effects are so basic. Like, why did you lose those? I think it just depends. They're not locked into a, a strict format. They have several formats to choose from and mix and match now. Yeah, I hope so, man. Because if this goes straight... Okay, they're clearly trying to go batshit insane, and hopefully that works out for them, because if they, like, crash hard, they're just gonna jump back into boring Sentai formula, and for a show with this many characters, I don't think it's gonna do them any good. Uh, Anything else? We will see. I think we've speculated enough on that. Uh, So then... Raptor's still talking. She goes on to quote a legend that basically as the galaxy falls, nine Q Rangers chosen by the Q Tama will save the galaxy, but they only have three for now. Lucky announces that he's the fourth Q Ranger, but he doesn't even have a Q Tama. And he says that he's determined to find his Tama Tama, which is pretty much dumb luck. And he runs off with the Saze of Blaster. So then we cut to one of the Jark Matter ships. And we see a shrouded version of the main villain, Shogun Don Almage, I guess. Uh, and he's just like a giant purple hologram, dark purple hologram. So yeah, pretty much so. Yeah, I know. What the hell Palpatine <laughs> jumping franchises now? Crush the rebellion. Uh, yeah, so he gets angered by the, I guess, chief villain here, Elidron, that the Q Rangers <laughs> are still alive. And in case you didn't catch it, I really like uh, Eladron's voice actor, who's uh, Sasaki Isao, who sung Midnight Decker Ranger and Decca Master Never Stop. Oh my god, so, really? That guy's voice is so smooth, I didn't realize it was him. Oh yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, it's pretty great. <laughs> so hopefully uh, he doesn't just die in the next episode, we'll see more of him. So Lucky flies to planet Jagu Jagu. But once again, his machine breaks down. But this time, when he crashes, it completely explodes. Super lucky this time. Oh, yeah. Uh, he opens his eyes and sees the blue Kyutama, but it's worn by this blue alien wolfman who attacks him. And the Q-Rangers come to break up the fight. Uh, so then we cut to the wolfman's village. Hami tries to help him awaken his Kyutama, but fails. Uh, we see from... The little text that his name is Gato. I still think it's Gadu, but that's besides the point. Uh, and he claims that pretty much no one can defeat Dark Matter. And Lucky says that he can't summon the Q Thomas power because he's weak, which leads to another fist fight between them. Then we see Eladron's ship arrive at Jagu Jagu, and we get some text that he's the chief retainer of the Sagittarius system. I have no idea whether that's going to be relevant or not, but yeah, that's his title. And he pretty much... I mean... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, it's because they're fighting an evil space show in it, so of course it's going to have retainers. It makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just so that with, much... um, with with uh, how, how there's the Red Ranger and the Blue Ranger fighting, I, I just, that reminds me so much of the tension between the Red and Blue Ranger and Decca Ranger, except it, this is done at like a mile a minute. Yeah, it just came out of nowhere. 
Yeah, I know. And Decaranger makes way more sense. Yeah, well, Elidron basically says casualties are okay. Just kill those Q Rangers. Then we cut back to the two fighting on the beach. Lucky's getting beat up pretty bad. He asks Gato why he doesn't fight. And he explains that he did fight, but in the process, his species was destroyed. And he's kind of accepted his fate as the last survivor because they never should have defied. Because he's old man Logan now? Oh, yeah, that too. Uh, So any thoughts on, I guess, the Blue Ranger? Because, like, in this episode, I guess he's the second most important character, I guess. Uh, I have some thoughts. Sure. So this entire first episode is basically three episodes on Fast Forward. Everything that we learn about Blue in, like, three minutes could have been two episodes. I, I was going to say the exact yeah. same thing. It's, it's, it's like, if you're going to just, just pick which ranger you want to introduce me to, we have time. Right? And, like, we're only looking at the first five here. It's not like it's that hard to write an introduction episode for the first five. We've done it 40 times already. That done. That's all. <laughs> I, I do find it funny that the bad guy's like, yeah, we don't, you know, go ahead and kill civilians. Like, that's not already a thing. You're the bad guys. Because, you know, he's like, oh, you know, we don't care about the civilian ca- casualties in this case, just so long as you kill these guys. Well, why do you care? You control all the galaxy anyways. <laughs> you can do what you want. <laughs> Well, he wants to stop a rebellion before it gets bigger. And that's exactly the whole thing with how they need to collect more new members. They're trying to get big enough so that they actually can be a threat. And maybe all of Jark Matter, which I still can't tell if that refers to an, a person or a group. But either way, they, they um, want to crush the rebellion before it gets bigger because they know it's a threat. Right, but if you're going to crush a rebellion, don't worry about collateral damage. Well, yeah, I think it's just if- yeah, I mean, it would cut into slave labor, I guess. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, the only reason you they would say that is because, like, okay, he's a retainer, so he... Like, maybe it's, like, the system lords thing from Stargate, where it's, like, you know, each system lord or retainer, I guess in this case, there's, like, a certain amount of people and planets that they control. So, like, it's like saying, okay, go ahead and blow up one of your planets just to beat these guys. Like, yeah, you could do it, but, like, you know, it's costing you a lot. You know, you don't really want to do that to piss off your boss. Yeah. So maybe they just needed, like, authorization, but, yeah, it's still stupid. Like, I mean, like, how many people did we just see get, like, destroyed in that intro anyway? A lot. So, uh, after Gato tells the story, Lucky goes on the offensive... And he's clearly stronger now. And he gets a pretty good right hook on Gato and explains to him that he's lucky to fight Lucky because he doesn't have to hold back against someone with superior strength. So I thought that was kind of a good moment for Lucky because we see that he's not just a hothead. He's kind of a wise ass too, <laughs> saying something like that. But then Dark Matter attacks the Q Ranger Star Change. Lucky jumps into the action, but Eladron deploys some ships to attack him, and he grabs onto one of the ships, but he's thrown into the vacuum of space. And and during this, he kind of has an inner monologue, wanting to fight and not wanting to give up. And once again, meteors are falling around him, and the red Kutama kind of just materializes in front of him. He reaches out, grabs it, and rides a meteor back into the atmosphere. Fuck yes! <laughs> yes. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the more badass moments. I'm like, all right, kid, you're you're kind of annoying, but, you know, casting meteor the first time you hench in, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, th- th- that's what made me feel like I knew what kind of show it was really going to be. I'm like, yep, this is going to try to just blow my face off. It-, it looked like the actor's face was getting blown off by all the sparks they had. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's only if the budget holds up, and like, I, I don't know what this show, man. Like, Ghost and not Ghost. Actually, it already blew through most of it. It seems, but who knows? I, I, th- I think him writing the meteor down is one of the most badass entrances for a, a ranger for when they get their powers. 
Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Too bad his catchphrase is shit compared to Yamato's. I mean, imagine say that intro with Yamato's catchphrase. How badass would that have <laughs> been? Land on the planet. Yeah, that that would have been awesome. Okay, I'm done. Okay, yeah. So he sides the changes, jumps off the meteor into the Henshin Star, kind of Blade style, and the meteors own a bunch of the grunts. And Lucky rises out of the flames and says his introduction, Superstar Shishi Red. And he pulls out the Q sword. He wrecks some grunts. Then we see the Q axe, Q rapier, and Q slasher, which is kind of like a dagger. And they basically, they insert the, their Q tamas into the weapon for the galaxy finisher. Uh, uh, do you want to say anything about those weapons? or? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, that sword was badass, but like the dagger, unless unless yellow has super speed, is the one that's going to get the most shafted at this point. <laughs> like everybody gets this badass weapon, I get the smallest thing with like no range. Uh, you guys got anything on these? Other than the fact uh... that I, I do like the look of them. Like with them actually being unique for, for I guess, lack of a better term, the standard weapon. It, it, I like the fact that they're different. I just feel like um, I I just feel like we don't the Q Tama when you insert them don't have very much of an effect. That's my only gripe. Otherwise, yeah, they're very unique, very cool. Yeah, I mean they already do so much. So like, if they're kind of weaker on the weapons, I'm okay because they're basically the mechs in Pokeball form. Yeah, you know, and the henshin thing. So I'm like, ah, okay, whatever. You know, if they couldn't roll it into the toys as well, as long as we get, look, at least it looked good, all right. As opposed to those terrible freaking gun sword things from Zuoger. Yeah, Zuoger had pretty weak weapons. Good show, at least for me, but weak weapons. Any other thoughts on these? I like the rapier. Yeah, me too. Yeah, a rapier is pretty unique. Uh, I was like. Well, for me, it just reminded me of uh, Kamen Rider Saga's weapon from Kiva. Uh, what about uh, Sam? Okay, yeah, I haven't seen the movie, but I, uh, I kind of know what you're talking about. Uh, Knight also uses a rapier, it just doesn't look like one. Yeah. Yeah, I don't count Knight. But yeah, yeah uh, watch Ryuki's alternate ending. Which, okay. Yeah, see, we kind of hit a point where it was the the clip show episode and that that episode jumped five timelines it was one timeline by the end of it we were in timeline five right so with all the other endings i don't know how many timelines riki jumped so pretty much lucky starts fighting two of the i guess tier two grunts and uh, a wave just randomly comes and washes them into the ocean so he uses his galaxy but he actually gets a name for his ability because, and I guess it's only just because the meteors are falling down, but it's Regulus Impact, and it's pretty much just a giant slash followed by the meteors crashing down on them. But the angle and... was so nice. Yep. Yeah, it's a pretty nice finisher. But it's, it's a red, so of course they're going to have the fanciest finisher. So then Raptor calls in the Oriongo is being attacked by the little mini ships, and I guess it doesn't have any defensive capabilities, which is kind of lame, but... Well, it's a carrier, but yeah, it's, yeah. that's kind of dumb. So Spot on Hammy deploy the Chameleon and Kachiki Voyagers to help. Some of the ships turn on Lucky, who's watching on the beach, and he accidentally does the Saiza Go command, which summons the Shishi Voyager, which is... I guess conveniently located on that planet, and it emerges nearby from lava, which is pretty awesome. And once again, Lucky says his phrase, <laughs> and the Voyager pretty much just lifts its paws, and a bunch of missiles shoot out, and it's super strong. Then we cut back to Oshi Black, outnumbered on the beach, and Gato pretty much finds the resolve to fight, and Star changes with the Seiza Blaster that was in the briefcase into Beast Star Okami Blue. And if, I don't know, I, I like the fact that the Beast Man, the aliens, robots, whatever, are kind of getting special treatment on their suits. Like, yeah. I really like Oshi Black's Okami Blue. His 
His is pretty yeah. neat too. I like uh I, I would say I probably like Okami oh, Blue the least as far as in suit design goes. I, but I haven't really decided if I hate it yet. I really like the black design, but I haven't gotten used to the fur yet. I like it sometimes because it makes me think of an animal, obviously. But then when he, I don't know, I, it's my gripe, I guess, is that it doesn't look as good stationary. It looks good while he's in motion, but not good when he's just standing next to the other ones. It seems like kind of a cheap material. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like, it would have been cool if it was something like, uh, crap, I can't remember his name. The wolf guy from, oh, Jiro, from, uh, Kiva, like the blue wolf armor thing. I was like, that would have looked nice. Uh, but yeah, I'm like, yeah. I thought that looked better, and I'm I'm not even that familiar with Kiva, but I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, but the problem with that is his suit would look way different than, like, all the other rangers if they did something like that, so I'm like, I wish they used some better material, like... Blue suit looks fat. Yeah. In in the wrong way. It doesn't look like muscle, it just looks like fat. He looks like a puppet. You can actually see uh, fur coming out of the uh, neck slot, too. That's cool. Yeah. I don't know if you noticed that, but you could see fur on around his neck. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things, like, what else could you have done to make it more beast-like? But I'm like, I don't know, man. Like, at least, see, the thing is, you could go the other cheap way, which is the cheap werewolf thing of giving it, like, weird gray fur, like, Geki Violet. But I'm like, that, if you put that on a suit, at least it'd look better than this. I think it's just the blue that's really not helping it, because it's kind of this weird, like, cheap material. Like, everybody knows what that thing probably feels like. (laughs) Itchy? You know? Yes, but I mean, like, that material, right? Like, I I don't know the name, but we all know what it is. It looks really itchy. Yeah, but, like, you know, you're wearing a suit and it should be fine. Yeah, but but I wouldn't want to hug him. Eh, well, he's a wolf man, so I should, <laughs> probably should stay away, too. I think the problem is it's because it's fur, but it's really thick fur, so what they should have done is gone more detail and made it skinnier, like one skinny layer instead of making, like, a pelt that they did. Yeah. Yeah, it's so hard to tell, like... Or maybe they should have just done the pelt thing and put it on his back. Or that. There's a lot of things, really. I don't know, man. Maybe it'll grow. I mean, like, I don't hate it or anything. Like, black suit, I think I'd like a little less because that giant visor of his. Because, like, at least yellows is useful. Like, black, that thing's just going to get in the way. Well, I mean, his head is giant, so I guess it kind of makes sense. At least you can see. We've gotten some visors in the past that it would be impossible to actually see through. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, so Lucky, his Voyager's mouth beam which destabilizes the other voyagers and lucky just somehow knows how to use the says a docking command and combines the three into a robot without legs but the the stubs have jet propulsion so it's all good and they attack the enemy ship and eladron sends out a giant tier two gyoza i guess not to be confused with japanese pot stickers so they get hit and as they're crashing towards the moon, Okami, the Okami and Oshi Voyagers combine as the legs, and the system voice says, Q Reno. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. Yeah. Like, they're about to crash, and you get that badass shot of, like, black and blue just coming out to form the legs. I was like, oh, cool-ass moment, man. Yeah, that was pretty I mean, actually, that, yeah, that last fight was pretty decent, actually. Well... In the beginning, it was decent. Then it's just standard. Okay, it's the first fight. It's just gonna get out of the way. I don't know. I thought it was a little better than usual. The first fight. It. It just. Uh. I. I just like the look of it. They didn't do anything that different, but I liked the look. I guess it, the sparks are really nice. Heck, I even used a scene from that in my new banner for my channel. So. Nice. Um. Yeah. It's just probably because I haven't seen a lot of Sentai. To me, it's like. Okay, a standard episode one. Fun. I I like I did like the fact that the mech is usable without all all the pieces. You know. Well, in space. Yeah, well, in in know. space, in, in at least in space. It looks like they had uh basically 
they, they planned for it to be able to be activated without all the components because it needs it's going to need jet propulsion in those slots you know if there's nothing there and it does yeah that's cool i mean then again what is their weapon like some like okay it's either super advanced tech or magic in which case it's like okay if this thing's gonna turn the tide of a galactic war you know it better have some good it's it's a sentai tech which is basically technology that is fueled by hopes dreams and willpower and destiny and destiny yeah well because like every single sentai automatically knows how to use all of their weapons i assume that there just must be some god in the sentai universe <laughs> maybe it's aka red or something it just goes all right you guys are sentai now i bestow the knowledge of how to use all these crazy new gadgets upon you figure the rest out maybe it just comes with a suit yeah something like that it, it seems automatic <laughs> it seems a given maybe there's just instructions right on the inside the helmets that's that's what I was gonna say. Like as soon as they sit in the seat, it's just a walk through park club inside the helmet. I mean, like I was gonna say, it's not the same in O Ranger because they're like a trained squadron, so they actually you know built it and then they read how to freaking use it. But like, yeah, usually it's weird. I think Sentai just assumes, okay, dude, it's a Sentai show. They're just gonna know how to use it. I just wish they'd learn how to use it which would explain like how they suck before and like as the shows go on they just get more and more experience like the ryuki thing gotta love ryuki for that yeah it's like you know he can fight sort of or at least he can take a punch but like as the show goes on he gets better and better at fighting uh, you know one of these days mm -hmm. sentai well no i maybe. thought um gosh like i don't want to start a shitstorm by saying this but i thought it maybe not so much with the mecha fights but with the um ranger suit fights ninja actually showed a very steady progression of skills that's good i haven't really seen that yeah show so i wouldn't really know i mean like uh Jouger made sense because like one it's freaking magic and two the sentai teams made out of like the freaking guardians of like juland right so of course these guys know how to fight yeah it's all primal instinct for them anyways yeah, that's true. Uh, plus, like, I mean, I guess these guys are fighting a rebellion, so maybe they just know how to wing it. They didn't, the, the Cure Rangers didn't even know that their mecha combined until, like, Lucky got lucky. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, it's one of those weird things. You know, I mean, I wish it came with the manual, then you can do the Date thing, is, and then, like, three episodes in, somebody actually reads them, and, hey, it can do this other shit, too, and that's how you get the power up. Well, that's one thing that kind of is hinted at from the commercials that i'll get into but yeah basically the intro song plays and the giant battle starts and we're we kind of get to showcase the the strengths of each limb uh the uoshi leg the chameleon arm the kajiki arm and the okami leg but one thing that i noticed from the commercials is that the legs can be used as arms and vice versa Oh so, my gosh, that's so hype. Yeah, that'll probably come up later, and it'll be pretty sweet. Uh, I also thought that them having separated seating was kind of an interesting change of pace. Yeah, that's like Voltron. That's what I thought, too. I wonder how the combinations would work, though. Like, do you just shoot off one? Because, like, before, you could just sit in the main cockpit and you just launch a new piece. What happens when you get like a new combiner? Like, do you just shoot off an arm and just get another teammate? Gal Ranger style. Really? <laughs> I, I don't know. I haven't seen that. All I know oh. is I feel bad for whoever, whichever member of the Sentai team has motion sickness. Yeah, there's gotta be some gyroscopic <laughs> stabilizers in those cockpits. <laughs> they probably do, but but yeah. It's one of those things like, yeah, they're perfect. Of course, they're never gonna have somebody who has vertigo or motion sickness but like in real life like you're just fighting a random rebellion and now you gotta like pilot this thing well there's like an anime called robotics notes that actually goes into building a, a real mecha and there's one part where they realize wait the cockpit isn't gonna be stable when this thing's in motion and they get knocked all back and forth and <laughs> things are starting to walk <laughs> that's pretty awesome yeah uh so then we get the finisher attack Q Ren O Star Break, and then the system voice is Super Galaxy. And basically, the sword shoots out 
volley, well, I shouldn't say sword, the Kajiki arm shoots out a volley of missiles and meteorites. I couldn't really tell. It's pretty crazy. While it's in the downward swing, and it halts after it has dug into the ground, which is a pretty awesome shot, especially on this moon terrain. The ground splits, and the Gyoisa falls into the split earth and explodes. So, pretty awesome. Once yep. we really got to, like, the uh, mecha fight, like, my brain just slowly stopped being able to process what I was looking at. <laughs> me so too. the last few minutes of this show is just a blank to me. <laughs> I I kind of remember feeling very similar. I've been watching some clips again today. Um, but I uh, yeah, I'm probably gonna flip through the whole thing again before I do my own episode on this because um, like I just kind of remember how I felt, and I remember like feeling like I was gonna like vibrate out of my seat. <laughs> So, uh, any thoughts on the fight, Bashy? No, honestly, is like I I liked it. I'm still not sold on the the, the mech design, but I, I I did like the finisher and the the how that all worked out. Yeah, because it, it was nice to see like it actually have destructive capabilities to something other than just the monster. Yep. This is gonna be kind of weird for me, but um, my favorite Sentai is Mega Ranger. So the fact that the attack is uh, it calls out super. Super Galaxy reminds me of one of my favorite Mecha of all time, Super Galaxy Mecha. That's that's nice, I guess. I mean, like, uh, it could be a callback because we've been doing a lot of those lately. I choose to believe it is. Nice. I mean, like, yeah, I kind of this fight looked pretty decent, but like, I I can't remember any of it now. All I remember is like, yeah, it's not bad. And like, the backdrop was pretty awesome with like the night shot and them being on the moon. That was pretty unique. Space idea. gives so many opportunities for them to just play with the look. The civilians look different, the food looks different, the fights look different, and there's going to be all kinds of edits they're going to do to the scenery, if, as long as they can just set a little budget aside for that every episode. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be nice. I wonder if they're going to do, yo, uh, Tyson Z's, that that ring around Saturn rider kick with the mech thing. <laughs> oh my god something like that i hope they, they show it's like too good <laughs> so good so then lucky and gato get their rebellion jackets and they get all psyched up but hammy and spada remind them that they need to find more rangers first before they really take the fight to the shogunate uh and then we get the ending dance song the which... visuals are so trippy oh my god I mean, yes, they did a good job with the visuals, but to be honest, I really was a fan of the song or the dance. I felt like they could have gone with another non-dance theme. Like, it wouldn't uh, be Sentai if they didn't dance. They've been dancing since they've had ending, since they've had ending songs. Almost like they've had dances since the Showa era. Mm, well, there have been three that didn't. Well, four technically, I guess. But, Out of, like, 40-something? Yes, I know, I know, I know. But all, all those songs were really good, and they had nice background videos, like the, the song on the road. Yeah, yeah. the song isn't memorable to me from Q Ranger, but the dancing moves were memorable. Yeah, anyone else's thoughts on it? <laughs> I didn't really watch it. I have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I have no thoughts on that. Yeah, I was going to say basically what Decade said, like, yeah, I mean, it's fun enough with the visual tricks, but, like, the song and the dancing are kind of, like, for how crazy the show was, like, that ending was way too low-key for what it needed to be, man. I feel it. Yeah, I mean, like, because Jewish's ending was pretty fun. Yeah, that's so cute. <laughs> yeah. And it matched so well with the show. I was like, uh, I wish we had something like that, but who knows? Maybe they'll change it. But maybe it'll get more interesting if we add more people. Oh, yeah, there's that. Yeah, but that sums it up for the episode. Then we get the preview, and next episode we're going to see gold and silver. So that'll be an interesting episode, hopefully. See, we're introducing them real quick, to yeah. at least two at a time. I'm sure that um once all nine are to slow down a little bit and give us actual episodes, 
but this first one was, as I said off of the podcast, like a hyperactive child on Halloween. <laughs> it is it is three episodes on fast forward. There is so much going on that there is nothing going on. I kind of know what you mean. Kind of overwhelming. Yeah. I didn't have a chance to be overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> Give you no opportunity to it. Just it ran through that real fast. All of Blue's like black backstory could have just been ripped right out, and it might have been better for yeah. it because that just didn't fit with the rest of the episode, and it felt so rushed. It was just bad, and yet the episode just keeps going like it's well written. Yeah. The only thing I liked about having the blue and the red focused on for the latter half was that I don't know. I, Again, it probably would have been better if it was his own episode, but I like how the blue had to be like, well, wait, this guy is is, is fighting for me. I'm not going to let that happen. Yeah, I mean, it had a little bit of good character moments, but I don't know. It, it tried to do too much, and it kind of all just meshed together not well at all. It's more like, okay, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened. Do you remember anything? It's like, it's like a six-year-old trying to tell his mom what happened at school. And then, and then, and then, and then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, this is the worst first episode of anything I've seen. Oh, really? I mean, it at least at least got me excited. It just, it wasn't great, but it wasn't uh, terrible. At least it got me interested. Okay, so that's good. <laughs> But for me, like, I, at first I'm like, oh, Nine Rangers would be cool. And then I saw Lucky in, like, the previews. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. Okay, it could still be good. And then I saw this episode. I'm like, fuck it. I'm, I'm giving up right now. I'm not doing this podcast. Screw, <laughs> screw any of this. Like, I, I wanted nothing to do with this. But I'm like, all right. I got to do this podcast. Plus... Like it could just be you know like terrible first episode. Yeah, I believe it's at least I believe in at least the three episode rule. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. I mean, except with Netflix shows where apparently everything good always happens on episode four. Like, what the fuck, Netflix? Get your shit together. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter how long they are. It's always episode four until it gets me interested. Um, yeah, it's it's got that writer problem. There's a lot of writer shows with really shitty first episodes. But, like, you got to give it at least three or five to know for sure. Uh, anybody else? Any last thoughts? Uh, not on mine, other than, like, it's out. I said everything I needed to. The only thing I'm going to say is that anything else I have left on my mind, I'm going to get off my chest on my own Q Ranger episode on Henshin Sunrise. So, if anyone wants to know more of what I think in more detail, it's going to be on there next week. <laughs> 